Hello, America, and uh, welcome to the program. I want to talk to you a little bit about this chalkboard. This is something that when I was over at Fox, I laid out, except I didn't put this part uh, down because I don't think I understood it yet. This isn't going to come as a brainstorm to very many people, but it is to me because I think it's the answer. Right now, after the election, we have everybody, we have, we have all these Republicans saying, we've got to ab abandon our principles. We've got to become more liberal. We got and they, they, what they want to do is they want to move closer to the Democrats. And so cut this even into a smaller pie. This whole chart is the real left or right. Right now, we, we're told that the Republicans are, are uh, right and the Democrats are left. But really, the scale is totalitarian and anarchy. Those are the, those are the edges. And after we fought the Revolutionary War, we had the Articles of Confederation. And it was as close to anarchy as they could possibly put it without being anarchy. But it was too close, and so it fell apart. So they came back and they did it again. And they put the Constitution just out of arm's reach of anarchy. And they told us that it was important to stay here. Well, through something called the Overton Window, we just slid this window down over and over and over, farther and farther down here. And we believe, and this is why the George Washington said, the two-party system will kill you, because it presents you with a false choice. Down this far is the Nazis, the communists, and the theocrats. People in our media and in our schools and everything else will try to convince you that the Nazis are right and the communists are left. No, they're not. Neither are the mullahs. They're all here. They're all on this end of the spectrum. And we are moving closer to that end of the spectrum. This is a false choice. Here's where the growth comes. If you really want revolutionary thinking, if you really want to save our country, that's why I've been saying lately, forget about the parties. It's not going to happen in Washington. Because they're only, they refuse to think out of this little box. Because that's where all their power is. But if you really want to know how to gather a storm, how to gather enough people. You come and you look between this one and this goalpost. This goalpost here, the Constitution, and the Republicans. And you get as close to this one as possible. Almost everybody lives in this box. There are some people that live over here as well, but almost everybody lives somewhere in this part. This is Occupy Wall Street. They're past the Articles of Confederation, and some of them, some of them believe, I don't even know how, they, they're anarchist, uh, anarchic, uh, uh, anarchic, uh, uh, say it for me, Penn. Anarchists. Anarchists th that are communists and socialists as well. <laughs> that's not, I, I don't understand how that's even possible. No government and total government. But they live somewhere down in here. But some of them actually believe some of the things that we believe in the Constitution. The Tea Party is rooted around the Constitution, but they also spread down closer to the Republicans and the evil Newt Gingrich. This is the problem. This is a problem. But this is the answer. Now, how do you get there? Well, you have to start having a different conversation. Um, and a conversation that I've been having today and I've had now over the last few years with a friend of mine, Penn Gillette. He's a comedian, he's a magician, he's a libertarian, and he is also the author, strangely, of a book this devout Christian will hold up. <laughs> Every day is an atheist holiday. Um, Penn and I met he doesn't remember this, I'm sure, but in 1990, I was a DJ, and I thought he was just the greatest magician ever. Well, that's uh, accurate. Well, <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then we met in, at uh, CNN, and mm -hmm. we had a great conversation, but we disagreed uh, a lot on religion. And time uh, went on, and we kept in touch, and... Um, we still disagreed on religion, and we still disagree on religion, yeah. but we have grown to respect one another. Did you say that's true? Uh, yeah, completely. Yeah. Um, and we, because I think the one thing we have in common is the Constitution. Well, yeah, there's, there's nothing more important. As I was listening, we talked about this before. We talked about it up in your office. But as you were doing it here, I, I would argue a little bit with you about the placement of the Occupy Wall Street people. Where would you put them? I, I might put them... On the other side, I might put them close to totalitarian because their argument is not 
uh, no government whatsoever. Their argument is using government to redistribute money. If I'll go there <laughs> if you make them just useful idiots. Because they're claiming that they're all about freedom and anarchy and no but, government, but they're really not. There's no claim for that at yes. all. There's, there's, there's no sort of, um, they want to have huge amounts of regulation. Yes. They want a huge amount of uh, stomping down on Wall Street and moving that money back. And that whole 1% thing, I mean, 90%, they are all in the 1% of the world. Right. And that's the part right. that's, they... they in order to make that argument, in order to be as rich as the Occupy Wall Street people are, you have to completely ignore the whole world. I mean, 300 million people in the United States is, is a very small number mm -hmm. when you're talking about knocking on 7 billion mm -hmm. worldwide. Those people are all, every single one of them, in the 1%, and every single one of them pays a cell phone bill every month that is the yearly income for a family in much of the rest of the world. They will, they will try to um, um, be perceived as um, anarchists. They hang out with anarchists. I know. So, I, I mean, I think they're... I think they're useful idiots, and which puts them again on well, the you know, Stalin it's side. It's just, I think you know your whole your whole line here is to me, how much freedom do you want? Yes, you know, and the idea, the way I sum up the Constitution, is we do the minimum amount of government we can have that assures individual liberties. It's Correct. all about it. And I was saying this back to you. People talk about. Um, there being a Judeo-Christian country being built on Christian values, which as an atheist, I believe in completely. But the most important Christian value it's built on is Martin Luther's idea of forming Protestantism that the individual communes with his God. Yes. The individual makes that decision. It's not top-down, it's individual. And individualism is the idea that is most important in the U.S. And I would just say that whole slide is how far can we go, how, what's the minimum we can go in government that gives every individual as much freedom as possible? That's what they were trying to do. Yeah. And would you agree that we're about there? Uh, yeah. Maybe a, little, <laughs> maybe a little farther? Maybe a little farther because yeah. uh, there's this idea that you can vote yourself money Yes. And that rights are something other than what you can do alone on so, an island. So here's the thing. Um, there has to be a, a, a groundbreaking shift in people's thinking. And it's in a very small way. Uh, in a very small way it's why I um, just partnered with Vince Vaughn. Because I want people to uh, look at that and go, wait, one of these things just doesn't belong. Yeah. Vince Vaughn and Glenn Beck, how does that work? Yeah. And, 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 and short circuit what they think they know. Well, the thing that bothers me the most about all of this is tribalism. I think tribalism, pride in a, in a group of people, is the most negative thing we have. It, it stops people from going across different lines. And it bothers me on sports teams. You know, I'm not a sports guy. It bothers me on all of this that, that you can be that, you know, and we've gone through this a million times. I won't do it again. But, you know, Tommy Smothers... Uh, attacking me because I went on your show because he sees me as part of his tribe and you're a different tribe and I'm not supposed to do that whereas the idea of the marketplace of ideas is that everybody talks to everybody and the the fact that we disagree so much on religion is the reason we should be talking yes. and the reason we should be sticking up for each other yes I mean there's a there's a science fiction writer that said if you could convince the gun people that the dope people were okay, and the dope people that the gun people were okay, everyone in the country was libertarian. You know, here's the, um, the, um, the, the, the problem that we um, have right now is we keep going back to the same, um, the same formula and the same argument over and over and over again. And anybody who believes in the Constitution is losing that argument. And like you take the gun people and the dope people, let me take the um, pro-gay marriage people and the religious people. I, I believe there happens to be a connecting dot there that nobody's looking at, and that is the Constitution. The question is not whether gay people should be married or not, the question is, why is the government involved in our marriage? That's the, that's the huge insult to churches. 
It's the huge insult to gays. It's a huge insult to love is the fact that we and it was it was pushed upon us. I mean, we, we didn't want that. You know, the idea that the government should be involved in love when you state it that way is completely insane. And when when, you know, my uh, friends, uh, many, many of my gay friends would say, are you for gay marriage? I would go, no, but I'm also against straight marriage. You know, we were my wife and I wanted to raise uh, children and um, we went to lawyers and said, you know, we don't want the state involved in our marriage. And I could not find one lawyer. And, you know, we had, we had funds to mm -hmm. talk to different lawyers. I couldn't find one lawyer who could guarantee me that I could have, if something horrible happened to my wife, that I was guaranteed custody of my children. You know, if she were to have a horrible accident or something, her family could come in and they could contest it. And so I am... We are married. You know, we got married, you know, at a drive-through in Vegas. Cost us three hundred dollars because we spent twenty bucks for the flowers and um, <laughs> three hundred dollar wedding. And um, in order to make sure that our children would be properly uh, pr properly protected with us, and uh, the government has built this whole thing. And once again, you know, I. I think every problem we have, we should say, can this be accomplished with more freedom instead of less? And gay marriage is the perfect example of that. Well, here's the we can th solve the whole thing with just more freedom. But well, here's the, here's the problem with that. The reason why people on the right won't listen to that is because we've been duped a million times by progressives. Because they're not into more freedom. There are many things that we have done in the past. We're like, you know what? I don't care. I'm not trying. Okay, they're handy capable. Because I don't really care. I don't want to hurt anybody. I am fine. Whatever. Live your life the way you want to live your life. It's not a, none of my business if it neither breaks my leg nor picks my pocket, as Thomas Jefferson said. What business is it of mine? However, when you get into the gay marriage thing, as most conservatives will tell you, that's not the agenda. The agenda is to shut down my freedom of speech and my belief in what, what you don't believe in, but I do mm -hmm. deeply, the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to live my life the way I believe. That's freedom of conscience. And yes. I have that right to do that. And if you don't believe it, have I ever talked to you, have I ever talked to you about the healing, saving power of Jesus Christ? Just now. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to baptize you. You are who you are. Yeah. So whatever. I know. But, it, but oh, by the way, it's also fine for you to do that. You right. also know you could talk to me about that, and I wouldn't split. Right. I'll hear you I out. I personally, I happen to believe you live your life in such a way that if, if people will look at it and they'll, they'll start to go, what, what is it that's special about you? Then I'll talk to you, but you and I don't have that kind of relationship, mm -hmm. and, and that's totally fine. But you're not going to hammer me for it, and I'm not going to try to build some theocracy to get you baptized. Mm -hmm. We almost had it with Mitt Romney. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, is what we need are people who, on the, the traditional, I don't even know, libertarians. We just need libertarians and people on the right to understand that you're a libertarian constitutionalist first. You're not a Republican. You are a constitutionalist. And if you stand with the Constitution... And then you find other people who may disagree with you, and they stand with the Constitution. Are you going to are you going to allow you, somebody to to shut down my church? No, of course not. Of right. course not. And I'm not going to allow. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stand there and let somebody shut him down. So if we can find people to turn the argument and say, "What business is it of the government?" which takes away their power and increases our power. I also the people. don't mind. I really don't mind. And let's not let's not take a nut of your level. Let's take a nut of Fred Phelps's level. I don't mind him at all. I don't mind him protesting um, funerals of, uh, of military people. I don't mind anything he says. Uh, Hang on just a second. Hang on. I mind because that that does break my leg on I, I, as a family. You want to you want to go and protest where my family isn't grieving. I, I as a family have a right to say, hey, out of the church well, territory. Well, yes, but it, it, it all has to do with property. Of course, the big case that went to the Supreme Court. The family could not see the Fred Phelps people at all. Could not see them or hear them. Then that then I I'm, uh, I'm with saw, you on. They saw them on TV later. That's not um, a problem. But. 
we have to get over the idea that you have a right to not be offended. I also Amen. believe the anti-abortion people are able to yell right here in my face. You know, uh, able to yell, uh, you know, if I were to bring someone in for an abortion, they can scream right here and hold up any picture they want. If they touch me, they go to jail. But as long as they want to just do that. So I think that uh, it, I don't care at all about you giving me respect and not preaching to me. I'm okay with you if you preach to me every single second we're together, I'm providing okay you don't have the government behind Correct. You. I'm okay with you trying to fill my nonsense with your atheist. <laughs> so I have no, I have no yeah. problem with that either. I, I understand that. Bec but because you know and I know we're not trying to subvert the other. Uh, you shouldn't cheat. Right. That's all it is. Right. The marketplace of ideas, you should be able to say whatever you want, make any points you want, but you don't get to run to dad and put a law in <laughs> right. that sneaks around and, and makes Correct. you rent. Correct. So what we need to do, I think, as people who believe in the Constitution, is to start looking for allies that believe in the Constitution and expand our own horizons and our... We're not going to win. We, ha we would have the ultimate big tent because the only ones that wouldn't be allowed in the tent are those who don't believe in the Constitution. Well, let me, let me, uh, there's, there's a wonderful thing that happened with the word Christian. The, uh, the evolution of the word Christian is fascinating. Um, in the 19th century, your three highest paid speakers were atheists. There was Robert Ingersoll, Mark Twain, and Thomas Huxley speaking of atheism and they were brought into the white house and they were embraced by candidates because bringing an atheist in showed the uh... the voters that you weren't going to be southern baptist or lutheran right. or catholic you weren't going to do any of those things and atheists were kind of this um... they were the they were the carbon rods in the reactor that said if we're okay with this guy you're going to be fine with bob southern baptist cult you know, see you they've got They've gone to Mormons now. That's kind of me. Well, no, now. No, no. now people are just like, I'm, gonna, I'm okay with a Mormon. What am I going to do? <laughs> I'm going to get there. And then you get with the, the atheists get, you know, get, a, get attached to socialism. And if I'm given a choice between a socialist and a Christian, I think it was Thomas Jefferson that said, I won't hesitate to go with the latter. I'll go with a Christian in a second over a socialist. So atheists get tied in there. And then you get to the 70s. And Roe v. Wade comes in. And some very, very intelligent people said, you know, we can't fight this with Catholics and Protestants and Baptists and Lutherans all disagreeing. We need an umbrella. And they kind of came up with the word Christian. The first president we have that calls himself a Christian is Jimmy Carter. Before that, you know, John F. Kennedy's a Catholic. Others are Baptist. Others are Lutheran. But they don't use the word Christian. It's, it's, I would they contend don't. I can go back. I'm going to go back and... They don't uh, use that word. I, I will go back and yeah. look for some of the founding... But No, the founding fathers will use the word deist, and they will also, uh, they will also use uh, Adams, of course, used Protestant and used Methodist. Right. They'll use those. I'm not saying they weren't Christian. Somebody get David Barton on the phone. <laughs> but they don't use that word. And then, in order to fight that, you get this big umbrella of Christians, which is what gives you 70% of the country being Christian, is not breaking it up by Catholics and Protestants and right. so on. And then we get to Mitt Romney, and we are now adding in the Mormons are now referring to themselves as Christians and getting in there. And most atheists flip out at this whole, the direction this is going. And I say, no, no, this is great, because we're next. <laughs> we're next. They're going to go to American. That's the next <laughs> word they're going to use. And then we're okay. We're in there. We're all right. But my point is, yes, let's just keep including, because we have as more in common. As there, but as long as there is the principle of the Constitution, uh, absolutely is is um, and there's there's because there's a lot of atheists and there's a lot of Christians. Um, you can go to to uh, Jim Wallace. Jim Wallace would not be in this coalition because he doesn't believe in the Constitution. He doesn't he doesn't understand the freedom of the individual, mm -hmm. the freedom of rights, as you said, mm -hmm. given by God uh, or understood by God. In or self-evident. Yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> were, that came down. Were given to us. Life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, um, and if you don't understand that, that's that's my right. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not a collective right. That's my right. 
That comes from our founding documents. If you understand that, you're in the club. If you don't understand that, you're, you're going to be a problem. You're going to be a progressive or a, or a, a, you know, a, a communist or a Nazi or something else eventually down the end of that road. Once you get off those principles, you're trouble. Back in just a second. feel like a dummy sitting next to this guy. Uh, we just had David Barton on the phone, and yes, uh, he's exactly right. They did not refer to themselves as Christians. They just referred to the nation as a Christian nation. So one point for the atheist <laughs> on Christian history. Um, uh, hang on just a second, because Kelly started to ask you a question, and I, I want to... I, I well, I asked her the question first. I said, why do you have those name tags? <laughs> And then you said so she could ask a question. That's right. Okay, so Kelly has a question. Well, I'm just curious what you do with our founding fathers' words that we are endowed by our creator mm -hmm. with certain inalienable rights. Well, yeah, they, he also uses self-evident. We yeah, hold these truths to be self-evident. And, and uh, he also uses nature's God and nature. I think they did this because of the, because you had that Thomas Paine. This is not an unusual relationship. George Washington was, was deeply Christian, deeply Christian. Uh, Although said, Sam, Sam, also very, uh, uh, very critical of Christianity as well. They, from within, they all were from, they, from yeah, inside. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Sam Adams, deeply Christian. Thomas Paine, and and they got along. They got along. I mean, in the end, Thomas Paine did uh, shove a knife in George Washington's back. I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, okay. I would, I so would keep answer, that in mind if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> so. So answer the question. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, they they do they do talk about a creator, and uh, it is very rare to find an atheist before Darwin. Um, you have a lot of people. If I were around in 1776, I would probably um, be referred to as a deist. And the basic idea of a deist is that there is no interventionist God, there's no God you can pray to, there's no God that does anything now, but there is a prime mover. Uh, because there's too many mysteries. And uh, atheists often refer to the God of the margins, which is as time goes on, we, uh, we, we, we put less and less on God and more and more on things that we find out. I mean, what's first cause? That's what that's me. That's, that's the, the, the prime mover now. There's a great book out by Lawrence Krauss called Why There's Something Instead of Nothing. And there's stuff in particle physics that is giving us real information on the very first. You know, we've got it down to the first billionth, billionth, billionth of a second. Before that, we don't know. And uh, you, you just keep pushing back that, that margin. So to say creator or to say deity... Uh, in those times was was very but very to say, reasonable to say first cause to you would well, that shouldn't bother you because but you don't, don't yeah. know what it you don't know what first cause the, was the, the the biggest misconception on atheism is that um, uh, atheism is in a phrase I don't know and I thought that was agnostic no agnostic it's two different uh, two different things agnostic answers the epistemological question about knowledge. Can we have knowledge? And then you are agnostic if you think two ways to look at it. One, you don't know, but more accurately, you can't know. There are, you there, are can know. There, there are questions you cannot know. Okay. There are questions that are beyond us that we can't know. Once you don't know, you don't actively believe. So I use the word atheist out of respect for my Christian friends who believe that uh, belief is active. So if I don't have an active belief, that I am an atheist. So the question agnostic answers is, can it be known? And then the, the question the atheist answers is not, is there a God? It's, do you believe in God? Do you actively believe in God? So, um, so I don't know is the answer. So as soon as you say, how did the world get here? And I answer, I don't know. Even though scientists have got a lot of information, I still don't know. Okay. Uh, I'm not even sure what's in my refrigerator. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, so in, in Pennsylvania, um, a mostly Catholic Italian town had to re, uh, relocate their nativity scene outside. It was outside of City Hall um, because of an outside atheist group, mm -hmm. the Freedom From Religion Foundation. They mm -hmm. came in and threatened the legal action. Mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson, in his writings, was proud that City Hall was used for meetings and church, church meetings on Sunday, four sure. different ones. And he thought that was not a problem. As long as 
it's not freedom from religion, it's freedom of. As long as the, is, if I could put a menorah and everything else out on the Times Square, why, why are atheists, why do they get so pissy about this? Well, uh, it's a conservative issue. This is all painted as though it were a progressive issue, and it's really not. It's a conservative issue. A true conservative believes that the government should be out of as much as possible, and there should be individual freedom. And they're also a true uh, Protestant, especially, or Mormon, believes very strongly in an individual relationship with God, yes. which means you have, in an ideal Protestant world, you have over 300 million different views of God in the United States of America. You can't fit those all in City Hall. So the best thing, as you said very well, we should just keep the state out of it. And you should be able to. Okay, okay. Look at all on, the property you have here. Right, right. Put, put a crash over there. Put a nativity scene over there. Tattoo things all over your body about, right. about God. So it, it, what you're saying is because... Um, it's only stuff I pay for that I'm bothered by. Right, right. But if, if, if we have a town square and, um, and uh, you know, all of the people on the street, they decide they're going to they're gonna pay for all of the decorations and everything else, and they're going to put them up as long as it doesn't cost the city anything. Mm -hmm. You don't have a problem with that. Uh, if it's not on public property. It can't be on but public property. But why can't it be on public because property? Because I'm paying for that. Yeah, but again, go, let me go back to Thomas Jefferson. Had no problem as long as it's not an endorsement of one religion, as long as it's not, oh, by the way, you can't be mayor. Unless you believe what I believe. That, that's what their real problem is. And you also know, and I, I'm, I'm sure you're fighting this, but there are many places in this country where you cannot hold public office if you are an atheist. Did you yeah, know that? I, no, but I would fight that. Yeah, of course you would. Uh, but I would just say it's such an easy fix. It's such an easy fix to just say if the whole town wants this, let the whole town privately buy a lot and do whatever they but want. But the whole town, not have to, not the whole have town to. did buy the park. Well, the whole town did buy the park with the government force. And that's the part. You want to use as little government force as possible. You want as much freedom as possible. So let's say there's one guy in the town mm -hmm. who doesn't want to speak about his religion. He believes it's private. Mm -hmm. And let's say his religion isn't even atheist. You know, he's not even atheist. He's not even non-religion. It's, uh, it's, it's some religion that uh, is a, it's an offshoot of Christianity that doesn't overlap uh, Christmas. And he doesn't want to speak about this because of his job and other places uh, he's, he's going to be. And he doesn't want his neighbors to know that. That's his personal right. We've checked that in the Supreme Court a zillion times. It's his personal right. Then the town says, we all want this, and he doesn't speak up against it. He's still paying for that. And it's so easy for the majority. Uh, you know, we don't care at all about the majority in this country. The majority always gets what they want. Not what now. we care about is the individual. It's the part. It's the things that make you different from everybody right. else that you have to be protected. The we, person we care about is the uh, is the individual who is not just like us. So we what have to the, really fight for the rights of. I don't care if it's one person in a town of twenty thousand that goes. I'm, I'm not really into okay. this. So what about then? Are the, what about the person who is the pharmacist who says, "I am not going to write that prescription." Absolutely, because, he has, he absolutely is right. Absolutely, absolutely is right. I'm not going to write the uh, Do I'm not, not write, write the that drug prescription. To, Do not to, for write abortion. that prescription. If I own the pharmacy, I can fire you. Yes. But that's all we got. No, right. absolutely. And You're not going to catch me on the other side right. because I and, really and, believe And the Catholic hospitals sides. that are being Absolutely, forced. they can do whatever they want. Absolutely. Just don't take any government money and you do whatever you want. Uh, you, you take the government money out. It's a conservative issue. It's not a liberal issue. Take the government money out and do whatever you want. Boy Scouts of America, they leave out gays. They leave out atheists. I'm totally okay with that. But you don't get to do your jamborees on public land. That's all I'm saying. Have your have your uh, have your public uh, your private clubhouses. You don't get to do it on private on public land. Anything else you want to do is fine. And. Uh, all it comes down to is don't vote to beat up the person different from you. We do not want to be a country of bullies. You don't want to be in that town you, and say... you say that well, be, taking money away from the rich, you're being a bully? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that, yes, you know, we, the reason they want to go to the 2% is that there are fewer of them. Right. <laughs> 
it's, it's easy to bully. Yeah, you know, you know, it's, you know uh, I really believe that you should not. My feeling of government force, my feeling about government force is the government has a monopoly on force. It's the only thing that's allowed to use force. If you and I have an argument, we're not allowed to, except in self-defense. The government can use force. And I believe that the government should only use force in things that I'd be willing to lose, use force. No. I, I'm willing I, to I use force. Not, I believe they're not. You're not. You cannot give the government a power that you yourself don't have. Exactly. So I will give the government the power to stop rape. Yes. To stop murder. Right. I will. I would. If I have a gun, I would not use that gun to build the library. I would not use that gun to put up a nativity scene. I would not use that gun to take your money and give it to someone else. If you're being injured, if you're being attacked, if things are being stolen from you, I will use that gun. I mean, leaving aside the yeah, fact yeah. that I'm a coward. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that is my definition. So when you say, you know, who cares about this? Who cares becomes very important when it's the government because we've given the government a monopoly on force. So it can never be taken lightly. Back in just a second. Never be taken lightly. Talking to uh, Penn Jillette, um, and uh, somebody just asked a minute ago, what do, you what do you think about the future of homeschooling? And I said, oh, not, not good things. Only because I think this government is growing at an exponential rate. We have hit the point of singularity where one step isn't one step, it's, it's four, then eight, then 16. But um, your technology is going right along beside it. I mean, as, and as so we is. talk about um, all the problem with college educations being so expensive and how we're going to fund those, mm -hmm. meanwhile, the Internet is putting up free college courses mm -hmm. that are starting to really work, mm -hmm. and they're going to eventually be accredited, and we're getting this all this information. We have the Library of Congress on our phones. I mean, uh, we may not be doing a very good job as a as a governing body but we're doing a great job in technology it is and a, that sometimes it, the wins. problem is yeah but uh, you know do you know who ray kurzweil is no oh come on you do too Who's you don't that? ray kurzweil ray kurzweil kurzweil piano oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. all right so i had him on last week spent an hour with him he is he is fascinating you have to read his uh, new book called um uh the making of the mind i think he's behind what what is it how to create a mind. That's what it is. That's why you have these people. Uh, yeah, <laughs> correct me. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, uh, he's the guy behind Google's uh, AI. Uh, oh, sure. Okay. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Frightening stuff. Tremendous and frightening. Mm. He doesn't believe in the self. He believes that um, soon, um, he told me, that Google and others will listen to all of your conversations. Um, he said within 10 years, you will have an injectable computer that it will be um, a billion times more powerful than your iPad. Mm -hmm. And it will be able to anticipate your every move. And I said, well, that's really good unless that technology falls into the hands of an oppressive government or Google. If I want to make a new Google, I want to make a competitor, why would Google... Uh, allow me to do that. Well, have you read, uh, there's, David Brin has a book called The Transparent Society, and he's got this, this point of, you know, privacy, as we see it, anonymous privacy, is only something of the past hundred years. Before that, you lived in a community, and when you were out in the street or going to a restaurant or walking, everybody knew, everybody. Knew everybody. Mm -hmm. And then we had this weird hundred years where you have anonymity it maybe it's the years. collection of data yeah it's the collection and storage of data but the advantage is if you can't look through that if you can't uh, search it if you're not looking for stuff uh, you have to have a motive to do that if the if the, if the control yeah it's, it's the, the most information basic. is available to everyone the, the problem not. is not the information going out. The problem is the information being kept. Yes. As long as Google lets everyone have it, we'd be okay. Mm, they don't. They don't. And, and neither does the federal government. Right. I mean, they they build that monstrosity that they're building in Utah is just that. You're aware of that, yeah. right? Yeah. And monstrosity. That, that leads you to a, a very dark future unless, I mean, really it is. It's a race. 
it's a race to see who gets there first, but don't totalitarianism forget, or somebody who can make it transparent. Two things have always been true in human history, always been true. Things are always getting better, people always think they're getting worse. Those two things have always been true. Violence goes down, um, uh, freedom goes up, in, in every sort of big chunk that happens. I really have, I mean, you have a level of optimism in me that is sickening. I really think things are, I mean, I agree with you on all this. I agree with you, that, you know, I was a, I was a uh, you know, Gary Johnson supporter. I'm a libertarian. I do think there's problems with the government, but I think there's a lot of end runs being done around that. There's a lot of individuals and a lot of technology that does end runs around the government. I think that's fantastic. And if you knew those people that were doing end runs against the power source, have them call me. <laughs> Because I'd like to, I'd like to see them, and, and because the government is growing day by day in astounding ways. Yeah, in, in ways that are not sustainable. Which is, which you know, it, th there is they can't keep doing it because money just runs out and it goes away, and it might get messy for a while, but it'll come out the other side much better. When we decide what we want to spend money on. Uh, you know, we get down to defense, courts, police. That's it. <laughs> That's <laughs> you great. Know, we if have plenty of money for that. If you could convince people to do that. Back in just a second. All right. Uh, Kim, um, you have a question or a comment. Uh, more of a, a comment. Um, locally here, there has been a program developed that is for the involvement of neighborhoods as far as planning and zoning, city council, other government meetings. A town is divided up in sections. Everybody in that section has a representative that goes to those meetings and reports back to their respective neighborhoods. That is how our neighborhoods got wind of certain programs that weren't going to be beneficial or... You're not saying Agenda 21, are you? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah. But it's, it's been a great local program right here in Texas. You know, I, I will tell you that um, the founders talked about Jefferson, um, talked about towards the end of his life that he didn't put enough Deuteronomy in. Um, and the thing that they were looking for is they knew that gerrymandering would happen. And they said what has to happen is the way Moses put it out in, in stakes. And that's a, a group of 100 people. And as it grows to 100 people, you divide it and you just keep dividing it. So everybody who is in your political ward, if you will, they know each other because you're right on top of each other. So you're like minded and they're just squares. And he said, someday, when this thing falls apart, they'll go back and do it the way Moses did it originally. You in the back? I'm sorry, I can't see your name. I'm Catherine. Hi, Catherine. How are you? I'm fine. Um, my question is for uh, Mr. Gillette. Um, I liked how you framed the definition of atheist. I had never thought about that, and it gave, it's giving me something to think about. Thank and you. I also appreciated hearing your explanation about why you oppose like nativity scenes on public property. Could you also comment about what you think about the Ten Commandments being displayed on public property and how that... Uh, it, it's, it's the same thing. You know, well, w one of the ways uh, Glenn and I get to know each other more was him asking me to write an Atheist Ten Commandments. And there is a lot of arguments and very reasonable ones that morality uh, is more important than religion. When you say the sentence, God is good, you have automatically said that there is a morality outside of God. And that's a morality that we all share. And I think that trying to put that in a Judeo-Christian context in a courthouse does leave people out. Uh, it's what all I want is for more people to be included in more things. And that courthouse should really belong to everybody. So let's put as few things in that are exclusive and as many things in as are inclusive. But when you, when you go all-inclusive, sometimes, I mean, um, you're, look, you're going you're to piss some people off because some people are killers. Thou shalt not kill is going to piss somebody off. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know what? I want to kill. Exactly. So, <laughs> but I'm just saying if we, if we make it, you know, 
way, way down that end. Anarchy won't work, but right. as much freedom as we can possibly get and keep right. our individual rights. So we well, can prove that killing somebody infringes on someone else's rights. You're well aware of the progressives and the progressive movement and everything sure. else. Uh, I believe in a libertarian progressive movement, except it's anti-progressive. It, it dismantles. We've, we've spent 120 years. You can't say to this society right now, hey, Free heroin. No, no, you can't. You can't. You, can't. you absolutely can't. And uh, but there's a lot of libertarians who will will be that. But way. you want to talk. You want to talk that way. You want to talk in theory. That's one of the ways we express ourselves is to talk in absolutes and purity. And then I'm willing to go really slow. I would just like to stop going that way. <laughs> I am with you. I would just like to go a little bit toward freedom. And you know, we can go toward freedom for a long time before you and I find one thing to disagree. I on. agree. We can keep moving that way. And by the time we disagree and we are really happy right I we're agree. happy to have that disagreement. I agree. this is the kind of conversation that I want to have on on the blaze in the coming year and um, in the coming years um, we have reached out to libertarians we are starting to write more from a libertarian point of view I'd love Penn to do a show on the network or write for the blaze um, because we have to have a different kind of conversation and one that we don't necessarily we're not going to agree on everything but I'd rather have this kind of conversation than a conversation where you're being asked to um, uh, falsify what you believe in to win an election. Instead, I'd rather say, I'm rather compromised here because I'm headed towards the Constitution, and that's at least the right direction. Back in a minute. Thank you, Ben. You can also do it without compromise. The Hobbit is coming out. It's a book that I have uh, loved um, uh, my whole life, read it to my kids. Um, but it's, it's one also that causes quite a bit of argument um, because some professors say that it's not Christian at all. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, you can just watch it as The Hobbit and enjoy it. Um, but let's set the record straight. There are real themes in this that if you want to look for, you can find. And we have some of the experts on The Hobbit that might give you a deeper understanding of uh, what the author meant when he wrote it. That's next week.